Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Tech.com video, we're going to be discussing cloud computing and the PlayStation 4. So I'm sure pretty much it's on everyone's mind right now. Are Sony going to pursue cloud computing for the PlayStation 4 to get it to render things just like Microsoft are doing? I'm sure you're likely aware that Microsoft have said that the Xbox One has around 300,000 servers. Uh, for Xbox Live, and this is thanks to the Microsoft's Azure service. I've already done quite a lot of videos on that, so you can check out the Azure and cloud computing video that I've already done, which goes into a lot of these details. Now, the purpose behind this, of course, is to do things such as AI and physics, and Turn 10 Studios have said that it boosts AI 600%. And so many viewers, many of my viewers, and even myself, have been wondering, well, what about the PlayStation 4? And for a long time, it was really mysterious because Sony have, of course, acquired Gaikai. And the purpose behind that was cloud computing in terms of being able to stream games. Uh, this is because, of course, the PS4 is not capable of playing PlayStation 3 games uh, by itself. And therefore, the best option was to stream them. So, Mark Cerny, who is the lead architect behind the PlayStation 4, he's literally the man responsible for everything that you see inside the PS4 today. The AMD Jaguar, the GDDR5 memory structure, and a lot more besides it, was mostly his creative vision. And you could say he put his heart and soul into the PlayStation 4, and, and so he was asked um, in interviews, what do you think about cloud? Do you think that it's worth pursuing? And his option is pretty much no. And he said, and I quote, To the extent that it's possible to do computing in the cloud, the PS4 can do computing in the cloud. So, out of quote, of course, he's clarified that should we want to do this, we have the technology to do this. So, that's good in the future. However, he also added this, this to it as well. We do some things today. Matchmaking is done on the cloud and it works very well. If we think about things that don't work very well, trying to boost the quality of graphics, for example, that won't work very well in the cloud. And that's end quote. So he's not really speaking about it too much. It's fair to say that it's obviously not going to be too optimistic and happy about it in an interview and say it's great technology, but we're not going to go with it because obviously their console, Sony's console, is competing with Microsoft console. But it's a very interesting use of words because it does seem that the PlayStation, if they choose to, could do it. Now, we do know, of course, there are a few pieces of specific technology that Microsoft have employed, but nothing really seems to be exactly just for cloud computing. So I have no doubt that Sony could easily do a firmware update and make use of this. But Sony really seems to be going the more bricks and mortar, and I use that in a loose sense, but what I mean, of course, is that they're relying on their compute architecture, the GPU, to do physics and AI and goodness knows what else, and regular viewers will know because, well, I've been speaking about it quite extensively, and I've actually put out a hell of a long video today just talking about this, so you guys could check that out if you so desire. Um, and... They don't really seem, and Sony, I mean, don't really seem to be that interested in cloud as a whole. Um, one argument here uh, is that unlike Microsoft, they don't have the already implemented technology. Sure, they do, of course, have, you know, PlayStation Network, but there's a huge difference between that and Azure itself. Azure, as it turns out, is used for everything from I want a website. It's a basic website, it doesn't do anything apart from, you know, host a blog, all the way down to, I need a huge data set system for my enterprise level business, and, you know, it needs to deal with thousands of requests a minute, and also I need to host a huge website such as Amazon on it. Now, Amazon don't need, of course, to be hosted on this, because they've got their own system as well. They've got AWS or Amazon's web services. But Microsoft are very, very, very keen to push the services of the cloud. And indeed, one of the primary reasons that the Xbox is always online is to actually allow the developers, encourage developers to 
be able to create titles on their console. For example, if the game, or if a developer already knows that, look, the people already need the system always online anyway, so might as well take advantage of it compared to now where it's more disc based and it's going to be a bit more of a question for developers, I think. On the other hand, the cloud also has a couple of issues as well, primarily as I've already discussed heavily in other videos, latency um, and issues where you have to sync to a frame. In other words, X needs to happen as soon as Y happens. So it's direct cause and effect. That can be a little bit tricky. Um, but a lot of the stuff is still really open to debate and I think that I would like to do quite a lot of some comparison stuff, not even to do with the frame rate itself, but just the level of interactivity in terms of latency and so on versus the cloud versus non-cloud games and see what really is going on, especially if there's an, an option like a toggle switch, you know, even if you just have to unplug the Ethernet cable, for example, just to see what happens. And it would be very curious to see what happens on titles like Forza, for example. I would really love to see, okay, well, this is Forza without, you know, the cloud boosting the AI, and this is Forza, you know, reverse, and see what happens, cloud versus cloud, and I'd be very curious on games with open worlds. I still think that the cloud does have advantages, but for right now, Sony don't seem that interested in that, and they say that the CPU and GPU combination um, it has numerous changes to it. it, has more ALU units, for example, it has far more ROPs anyway, and various other bits and bobs, as well as higher uh, performance out the gate. Obviously, Microsoft have somewhat increased the clock speed. They've gone to, uh, what is it, 853, which gives them about 1.31, 1.32 uh, T-flops compared to 1.84, so it's, you know, it's a marginal improvement, but still. I'd rather have a marginal improvement and zero improvement, as you can imagine. Um, but still, a lot of this is still really early, and if Sony do decide to implement it, it will be a bit of humble pie down the line, I suppose. But for now, they've got no intention of it, so it seems. Anyway, regardless, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I will hopefully see you soon. Take care. Bye for now. <laughs>